Hello and welcome to the North Phoenix Chamber of Commerce's uh, next episode of Candidate Interviews. I have the honor of speaking here with Steve Kaiser today. Steve, welcome. Hey, thank you, Tom. I appreciate the time. Yep. Ah, this is a uh, this is uh, great for us to uh, be able to share with the business community your thoughts on and your perspective on uh, how your uh, term will impact the small business community. So uh, Steve is running for uh, Legislative District 15. He's on the ballot for November 3rd, uh, 2020 here in Arizona, in Phoenix, Arizona. And Steve, I'm just going to ask you uh, just four really straightforward questions around the business community. We're asking exactly the same four questions of all candidates and, uh, and just recording this call. So uh, at first, the first question I'd like to ask is, what differentiates you, uh, in your opinion, from your opponent, from, your opponent uh, from a business perspective? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, and thank you to all, everyone that's tuning in to watch this. Uh, it's an important first step to just being informed voters is uh, having events like this where we can all learn about the candidates and what they stand for, because there are really stark differences between the candidates in this race for North Phoenix, Scottsdale, and North Glendale area. Uh, but what separates me initially from my opponent is very clear, and that's a, I'm also a small business owner. I have 12 employees. I make payroll every Friday, and we've been learning how to survive through COVID and you know business life in general too, because my business is fairly young. We've crossed the two-year mark, but um, everyone out there that owns businesses understands how volatile this has been the last six months, but how volatile business ownership is in general. And unless you own a business, you don't really understand that. And my opponent has only worked in government their entire adult life. They didn't worry about income stopping during COVID these last six months. And another big difference is they support Proposition 208, which is the Invest in Ed initiative. And I support public school. My, I have three boys in public school. I want to find ways to get more resources to public schools, but this is not the way to do it. This is going to raise small business income tax by 77%. It's just outrageous that you would think this is a good idea after so many businesses that went under in the last six months due to COVID. The ones that are still around are on a shoestring, and then you're going to hit them with a tax small businesses are going to pay more than C corporations met higher than the big businesses here. It's just an outrageous plan and not well thought out. We need better policy out there. And that's the big difference between uh, me and my opponent. My opponent supports prop 208. Um, so that's, it's a big difference for business owners and people that work for businesses. Do you have any legislative plans for your term that will impact businesses in your district, either any new legislation, that you're considering or repealing any old legislation? Yeah, thank you. Um, one of the two committees I would love to serve on if I get elected is Commerce and Ways and Means. And the Commerce Committee is everything that you would think of for small business, large business, any business activity that's going to be happening in the state of Arizona is going to go through the Commerce Committee. So you need to have people that understand business, people that understand how to make payroll and what's going to be a negative impact to businesses. Ways and means is all about taxation. So um, again, do we raise uh, the income tax of small business pass-through entities by 77%? Is that a good idea right now? Probably not. So you need people on those committees that think, you know what, maybe to grow businesses, we shouldn't tax them and strangle them. We need to grow them and help them succeed. Um, some of the other things I'd like to see uh, advance are uh, supporting uh, the community colleges. So there was a bill last session to allow community colleges to offer four-year degrees for specific types of industries like nursing or fire science. And I think that's a great idea. It was stopped by um, some of the higher ed. And this is where my opponent works. They work in higher ed. And higher ed doesn't want to see competition from the community colleges in this. But if I am you know, short on teachers, this is a great way to get more teachers. If I'm short on social workers, this is a great way to get more social workers, firefighters, nurses, all these essential duties and essential jobs that uh, we need out there could be fulfilled on a much more economical basis through the community college. So I wanna encourage that. I also wanna encourage uh, dual enrollment. This is where high school students can earn college credit while they're still in high school. So that's a great, that's a great way to advance a lot of folks in our community. Um, I also want to focus on affordable housing for single family homes, but also for multifamily homes. So um, 
you know, a lot of my employees really struggle to find affordable apartments and they're married and they have kids. And the reason um, apartments are so expensive right now is because supply and demand. It's as simple as that. Same with single family homes. But there's also some major zoning issues that limit the growth and opportunity to build these faster. So we don't necessarily need tax credits for these, but we do need to reduce the regulations and zoning requirements to allow these to grow faster because we need housing here because we're growing so fast. Uh, do you have, can you tell us about any other plans that you have for economic growth in the area? I know you've touched on a little bit. Is there anything you want to expand on there? Yeah, so the most important thing to remember about why we are the fastest growing state, fastest growing city, and fastest growing county in the nation is due to our economic climate here. And that climate is based on low taxes and low regulation. People can't afford to live in these high tax, high regulation states. So they're fleeing those states. They just can't afford it. Can't afford gas, can't afford rent, mortgage. Um, the jobs don't pay enough to cover that. And so they're coming here and that's great. And that's how we continue to, to grow is to grow smart. So we have an influx in people which will add to the revenue base without having to increase tax. I think some, uh, some folks think that you need to raise taxes when you have an influx of population, but that doesn't um, make sense to me because I feel like when you have an influx in population, that naturally is gonna raise the tax base because I'm chopping, I'm buying things, I'm contributing taxes. So that's gonna happen regardless. So I think we need to focus on what are we doing at the state level, city level too, but I'm running for the state level. What are we doing at the state level to make sure we keep the taxes and regulation really low to encourage this continual growth and then we can manage this growth in a smart way because if we manage this growth incorrectly we're going to stifle the growth and we're going to become the next california that people are fleeing from so steve one more uh, final question here why should business owners in uh, ld15 and legislative district 15 support your candidacy is there anything else you want to share yeah i think it's because um they know that they'll have a sympathetic ear down the legislature. So when you come to me and you say, Steve, you know, this new law or this new regulation by the city is really hurting my restaurant or my service business. Can you help me? I'm going to have a mindset of, I'm going to care about you. And I'm going to understand that how much you contribute to the local economy by hiring people, paying taxes. My opponent's not going to feel that way. She comes from a government run mentality and there's not going to be a sympathetic ear for a small business person that comes with a problem. It's going to be, why aren't you paying more? Why don't you pay your fair share? Um, and so it's just such a stark difference between government and private sector in this race. And that's what I hope people take away from this, that you want somebody at the state capitol that understands private sector and works to protect and advance private sector. Wonderful. Steve Kaiser, Legislative District 15 candidate for November 3rd here in 2020, running for state uh, state legislature. I appreciate your time, sir. And, uh, thank, thank you very, you very much, much for Thank you for sharing your perspective on, on small business. Thank you. Appreciate what you're doing.